This is a special edition of Lou Dobbs Tonight. Border Betrayal. Here again, Lou Dobbs. Welcome back. Tonight, former Border Patrol agents Ramos and Capion are behind bars. Ramos is in the prison right behind us. The two agents were prosecuted by U.S. Attorney Johnny Sutton. Sutton's prosecution of the two agents while granting immunity to the drug smuggler that they wounded has been widely criticized. Did Ramos and Capion receive a fair trial? Many, if not most, believe they didn't. Casey Wyan reports on that trial and the jury that heard the evidence and convicted them. She was the last holdout on the jury that convicted Border Patrol agents Ignacio Ramos and Jose Compeon of violating a Mexican drug smuggler's civil rights, assault, and obstruction of justice. She doesn't want us to show her face or use her name, but she does want the public to know she doesn't believe their guilty is charged. I remember being in the jury room, talking with the other jury members, um, crying. Uh, I remember when the verdict was read, um, felt like I was going to go through the floor. Um, Why were you crying? I think because I felt like I had made a decision, and it was probably a wrong decision, but I had to make a decision. Agents Ramos and Compeon also had decisions to make during their pursuit of a Mexican drug smuggler driving a van loaded with 743 pounds of marijuana. The smuggler got out of the vehicle, ignored the agent's orders to stop, and they thought he had a gun, so they fired. One shot hit Oscar Aldretti Davila in the buttocks. I believed them. Um, I believe that they felt danger at the time and that they had a a split-second decision that they had to make and that they felt endangered, their lives were endangered. And I felt that they, they had to do what they had to do. They've been trained to do that. The juror says she felt pressure to change her vote to guilty because of an early agreement the jury made to reach a verdict no matter what. We had been there two weeks, felt like there was a lot of time invested into the trial and it was going to be my fault if it was a mistrial or we're a hung jury. Copeon's attorney still struggles to understand the verdict. I really believe that the evidence showed that Mr. Compeon and Mr. Ramos were two Border Patrol agents doing their job, uh, who had the right to carry a firearm and had the right to protect the border and who had the right to detain this drug smuggler. I can't believe uh, that a jury would convict uh, my client of, of that offense, of assault, assault with a weapon, a civil rights violation. Um, and I can't imagine what went wrong at the trial. What went wrong, supporters of the agents say, is prosecutors succeeded in keeping key exculpatory information from the jury. For example, the drug smuggler was tied to a second smuggled marijuana load while he was under the protection of the U.S. federal government. And jurors were barred from hearing testimony about drug cartel violence on the border. Some in the media have suggested that Agent Campion and Agent Ramos should get medals for shooting this drug suspect. I disagree. I think that this jury did exactly the right thing by holding these two agents accountable for what they did. The United States of America is a country where the rule of law applies. It applies to all citizens. It applies to police officers. But apparently not to drug smugglers. I feel no sympathy for this uh, alien. I feel uh, that he deserves to be in prison. If we ever find him again smuggling <clears throat> drugs into this country, we will happily put him there. They had him in custody. He was in a federal courtroom. It would have been a very simple matter to have one of the U.S. Marshals put the cuffs on him and lead him out, charge him with those offenses and they failed to do that. Federal Judge Kathleen Cardone sentenced Ramos and Compeon to 11 and 12 years in prison, respectively. Ten years of that was a mandatory sentence for using a gun to commit a crime. It is a draconian punishment to, to blindly assess a 10-year punishment to somebody like that. I, I hope that Congress would consider amending that statute. Congress is considering that, and more than 90 members are sponsoring legislation to pardon Ramos and Compeon. In the meantime, the agents remain in prison while their convictions are appealed. 
We'll hear more from U.S. Attorney Johnny Sutton, the man who prosecuted Ramos and Capion, later in this broadcast. In fact, we're going to give him the final word here tonight. Joining me now from El Paso, Texas, is Mary Stillinger. She's attorney for Ignacio Ramos and Chris Ancliffe, attorney for Jose Capion. And also joining us tonight from Dallas is Bob Basket, the attorney who's now handling the appeal for Mr. Capion. Thank you all for being here. Let me start out, if I may, by just a, a straightforward question. Uh, Mary, I mean, controverted facts, a drug smuggler given immunity, prosecution against two Border Patrol agents, they're brought to trial. What, what went wrong from your perspective? Well, I think some bad decisions were made at the very beginning of this case. The way the government chose to initiate this prosecution is really the, the most shocking part about this. Um, you know, these two men were arrested and charged with attempted murder based on what the drug smuggler told the agents, the investigating agents. Uh, investigation was done after the fact. Uh, but the government started out with a very aggressive approach in this case. I mean, they, they didn't take it as an administrative violation or, or a bad shoot. They, they took it as an attempted murder. Why, Why do, do think I think they, they did that? Did that? I, I don't know. That's the million-dollar question. I don't know why that happened. I, I, I just it, know that once, once it started, attorney, they couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. As a trial attorney, let me ask you this. Why yes? did that jury believe a drug smuggler instead of two sworn officers of the United States government? I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things. One, I, I'd like to point out, I don't think all the jurors did. I think there was a very, uh, there was a split among the jurors. I know, I, I think you just had one of the jurors on. Uh, there were three right. of the jurors who, who submitted sworn affidavits exactly. saying that they thought they were not guilty. They were misled by information given them, to them that caused them to vote guilty ultimately. Right. Uh, that's one thing, but and also another. That. Right, and another very important thing is that the jury didn't get all the facts. Um, you know, one of the, the like fundamental... What? Well, uh, you know, Osvaldo Aldarete Davila, the drug smuggler, was only required to talk about what happened on February the 17th, 2005. He was not required to answer any questions about what happened before that date or any questions about what happened after that date. Right. And that's an extraordinary situation. Uh, one of the fundamental right. parts me, of a, a fair to... trial... No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, let me turn to Chris Ancliffe and ask, is there at this point anything that you would have done differently in this case uh, in representing your client? I think that there wasn't anything I would do differently in representing Mr. Campion during the course of this trial. Uh, I know that Mary Stillinger and I and Maria Ramirez and Steve Peters did absolutely everything that we could. I agree with Mary that the problems with this case began at its inception when the government decided to charge attempted murder off the bat, rather than administratively looking at whatever happened that day. When they decided to you've take heard, such an you, aggressive you've stance... You've heard Luis Barker, the, the former chief uh, of that Border Patrol sector, uh, and T.J. Bonner and others, uh, argue have. about the facts as to whether Campion and Ramos had uh, said that the, and testify that they had uh, suspected or saw rather uh, what they thought to be a gun in the possession of the drug smuggler. Uh, Luis Barker says it's incontrovertible that that was after the fact and that that is not what they believed initially. Does that? Uh, he's mistaken. Give us the record. That's all I can say is that he's mistaken. The record and the trial Mary. testimony established that uh, there was Mr. Alderete Davila, the drug runner was pointing something that they believed to be a weapon back at them when both fired. Yep. They both saw that happen. They stood Mer by that statement. All right. Let me turn uh, now, if I may, to, to Bob Basket. How hopeful are you? What's your professional judgment? With all that we've got, three attorneys, with, I mean, three jurors with sworn statements, uh, thinking that they were misled in, uh, in, their, in delivering that verdict. Uh, what is the likelihood of winning on appeal in your judgment? Well, appeals are very difficult because of the uh, manner in which they're handled. The burden becomes basically one on the appellant to demonstrate a harmful error. Uh, we're working hard to find those errors. I think the, the situation with the jury, if, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Chris can tell me, didn't you have a hearing about uh, some juror telling the others that they could not uh, have a hung jury. They had to reach a verdict. 
Unfortunately, we never did have a hearing. Uh, those facts did come out that the jurors believed that, but right. we never did get a hearing on that issue. All right. Okay. Well, that's you know, an I issue. I want to say thank you to all. We're getting, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Bob Baskett, we thank you very much. Mary Stillinger, we thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, Chris Ancliffe, thank you. Uh, and good thank luck. Thank you. A reminder now, we're Thank asking you, you to vote in our poll tonight. Do you believe there should be a full congressional hearing into the prosecution of former Border Patrol agents Ignacio Ramos and Jose Campion? Yes or no? Cast your vote at lutobs.com. We'll have those results later here in the broadcast. Up next, I'll be talking one-on-one -on -one with the man who brought these uh, Border Patrol agents to trial, who ultimately sent them to prison, and who gave immunity to the drug smuggler who testified against them. U.S. Attorney Johnny Sutton joins me here next. Stay with us. Show me something cool, man.